Salam, you are watching News Click. We're in Imphal, and uh, making us look good this evening is Alfred Arthur, the sitting uh, Indian National Congress MLA from 44 Assembly Constituency, uh, which is Ukrul, uh, part of the one of Manipur's hill districts. Uh, he was elected as the representative uh, for uh, the district in 2017, and is currently in the unique situation of being perhaps the only sitting. Uh, MLA in the country who is campaigning for re-election but uh, cannot do so in his own uh, constituency. Uh, we'll get to get into that um, a little bit later in this conversation, uh, but we, he doesn't know it yet, but we're also using him to get a general sense of what the Congress and uh, the Progressive Secular Alliance is seeking to achieve through this election and what, how, how they view the situation on the ground as it stands about uh, three, four days before we go to the first round of polls on Feb 28th. Hi, thanks, hi. thanks for your time. Uh, first of all, as of today, how do things stand for the Congress and the larger alliance? From my perspective, yes. uh, it's clear that under the present uh, dispensation, that is the NDA, uh, the smaller NDA that is in the state, you know, we can't continue longer. The entire country will, country will disintegrate. Mm. So the people also realize that uh, it's more of, you know, fascism sort of thing. Mm. And the other day when Rahul had come to Imphal, he had said the same thing that he had said in parliament, that India is a, you know, union of states. So the importance that the Congress party gives to not the secular part, but I would say the plurality of India. Mm. That is the core of India. We are plural. See, we were never Christians. Yeah. We converted much later in 1896. Mm. But it's the beauty of India being plural and being recognized mm. that is as a union of states. And so you accept that each citizen across the nation has equal rights. So this the Congress party provides. Mm. I'm here in this party not because of running after any sort of a position. But it's believing that the ethos and ideals of the nation, somewhere you draw a line. Hmm. See, we as politicians, we all make mistakes along the way. We apologize to the electorate. And hopefully or willfully, they'll ac accept it. And they, they let us also move along. Hmm. Now, in all of this melee, the thing here is the biggest picture of being a citizen, is that being totally eroded slowly by slowly. But one part here is leaders across the country, across the spectrum, within this particular alliance in the nation as well as in the states. Mm. People realize that India is disintegrating. Mm. This is why India will never become a superpower. Mm. Neither will it you know, take, a, take its place among the nations to be a leader mm. with this sort of a party heading. Mm. So, we also have, you see, leadership issues or we have party, you know, internal issues. But at the same time, the country has to understand that where actually does everything flow down to in the end? Mm. It cannot be a single leader. If we believe that it is a union of states, mm. then someone as insignificant as me should also have an equal role, be it in UP, mm. be it in, you know, Jharkhand or be it in Gujarat. And this, I, I certainly feel that the Congress party has always provided. And one basic example being that so many leaders from the Northeast, they were given space from Nagaland, be it from Meghalaya, uh, be it from Manipur, to actually represent the voice of the Northeast to how it was actually implemented at the ground. That's a little different. So now the youth are restless, mm. they're understanding. Yeah. GDP, see, from, from the state of Manipur, we are close to the last. Mm. We're the last in the Northeast and second last in the country mm. per capita income. Yeah. So what does this say? It says that, you know, governance is zero. And the only thing that one is worried about is the image and the view of the majority, mm. which is just, you know, you shove it down your throat. Mm. This uh, we don't accept. Mm. I will never accept. Mm. And for this reason, there are different ways of voicing this. One, you be the voice of the people. Or the other is you go the undemocratic way, since the nation is built on laws. Yeah. 
We are trying to follow that, and the people are realizing. I'm sure the people will throw them out in the in the coming elections. In the last uh, 2017 assembly elections, the Congress Party was the single largest party with 28 seats, if I'm not wrong, uh, but were unable to form the government. What were the challenges then, and how are they different today? What happened then, the whole country knows. Mm. Uh, this is always the modus operandi of the BJP. You know, jahan se bhi chori kar lo, and sarkar banao. So this sort of thing too, it has to change. Mm. The, like I say, they somehow forced their way through, uh, formed the government. What happened in the process? Mm. You completely murdered democracy. Mm. You had an MLA from the Congress who was not even sworn in in the House, but his certificate says very clearly, INC MLA, and you are sworn in as a minister. Now, where does the tension will go? Mm. Where is the constitution? Mm. See, there are so many MLAs who shift camps hmm. without resigning. Hmm. I still give them, you know, benefit of the doubt, saying that it's okay. That is also very wrong. But yet, but this, there is, you know, the legislature and the executive. There is a separation of this totally in the country. Now, you don't even believe that you are a legislature. That is why you just, you know, flout all rules of law and you become a minister. Hmm. So, all these sort of things are just the game plan of the BJP. And mm. they say that the Congress has been doing this in the last 50 years, 60 mm. years. See, the country, especially the Yuva, mm. the youth, they believed in Narendra Modi when he said that, you know, a, a government of change. Sabka mm. saath, sabka vikas. Mm. Hopefully we'll get to that later. But it's totally, you know, a lie. How much longer are you going to deceive the youth of this nation? Mm. You cannot. People, you know, in the far-flung interior borders, like, for example, my, my constituency, Ukrul, mm. we hit, you know, we're, we're covering the international boundary with Myanmar. Yeah. Even people from the furthermost, you know, far-flung areas, they realize that we have been taken for a ride. So, how we could not form the government then, mm. and why we will form the government now, is very different. NPP believed then in Modi ji and Amit ji's, you know, slogan of you know, everyone together, mm. and everyone growing together. Mm. So, this is not everyone growing together. When the Congress set up camp in 2020 to dislodge this government, mm. the BJP government, mm. what happened was somehow they cajoled and somehow they convinced that the, the NPP to come back into the fold of the BJP and they give, back, give them back all their you know, ministerial births and the positions. But you see, three, four months down the line, two ministers are dropped. Mm. And I heard and I believe that uh, the Konrad Sangma's sister also was supposed to be, that was assured at that point of time that he would be in the union cabinet. Right. That also was not given. Yeah. So, how do you expect, you know, at least we may have nothing in the Northeast. Mm. We may be many things which mm. people tell us. Mm. But one, one, one thing is that a little bit of dignity is there in our tribalism. Mm. We believe that, you know, whatever God has given us, at least you have, be a dignified citizen. So we try. I hope that when you went to Ukrul today or yesterday, the people there are poor. You know, yeah. we, we may be not, you know, up to the literacy mark of the rest of the country or as literate as people want us to be. But we hold our heads high and then try to live as dignified citizens of this country. So now, this is exactly the reason why the NPP, be it so, be it the JDU, nobody wants to truck up with the, uh, with the BJP now. Hmm. Nobody. Hmm. Now, the funny part is the BJP is going hammer and tongs on all its coalition partners, saying that we have nothing to do with BJP, we have nothing to do with, you know, the yeah. NPP. NPP. Drop them from the Council of Ministers, who stopped them? Hmm. You could have dropped them, you know, like a, just like a drop of a hat. Remove them. It's the, uh, you, you, you are a minister mm. at the mercy of you know, the, the chief minister. Yeah. He can do as he wants. You're not dropping them mm. because you are still you're going, uh, continuing with the government. Mm. At the same time, you're lambasting your coalition partner. Mm. So what does that say about you and your character? Mm. When you are you know, shouting at your own coalition partners and you're moving together in the cabinet, so... Th Governance cannot be this way. It's the people that, in the end, that it's the people that are destroyed mm. or decimated. Mm. So the people realize, and that's why this time it's assured it'll be a Congress-led, NPP-led, or JDU-led, anything. But it'll never be a BJP-led or BJP coalition government because the people of this state are fed up, totally fed up of the, you know, the BJP. Let's say the scenario that you are, uh, are presenting pans out and on March 10th, Either the Congress or the NPP or the JDU leads a new coalition, hopefully a secular co coalition that works against the, what has been a shift towards majoritarian politics uh, without any sort of unabashed shift uh, or move rather. Uh, 
what will see what will we see happening differently in terms of real issues that especially young people uh, women in the state who we see actively are very much involved in the economic life of the state uh, and other aspects of it but underrepresented when it comes to uh, standing contesting elections uh, even perhaps in the bureaucracy uh, what will we see happening differently in the next 5 years after 2022 see everyone talks of uh, india's uh, production levels with regard to agriculture or horticulture and allied sector mm. manipur too is a state whereby for example the hills which constitute 90% mm. we are a totally agrarian state so our population they depend 100% on agriculture in the hills now in the valley at least in fall greater in fall area a lot of population maybe about 5 to 7 lakhs they are self self sufficient because they are either employees or entrepreneurs or you know uh, businesses self 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 uh, sustaining businesses right. but the rural rural part of manipur which is you know close to 50 to 50% of the population remaining population this is where the entire focus lies why is it that you have the entire government of india giving incentives on agriculture to farmers mm. a 6000 uh, grant rupees grant mm. that was in batches of 2 2000 you have the entire farmers waiting it cannot be like that mm. you know empowering people is not you, you can't appease, keep appeasing people and then lead them further and further into poverty mm. learning to depend on the government mm. you have to empower them mm. now what uh, the congress party has actually thought of and we have also put down in our manifesto this time is that we are going to go full swing into whereby we can start producing mm. productions have to grow there has been no production all of these years i i realize since independence of this nation now i don't know why this has happened so but where where we are concerned now that is within the party also there is the old guard the young guard everyone together one thing good about the congress is that we listen to each other we may fight how much but we never fight open in the public we fight within the family mm. so now the thing here is production levels will grow because 90% of the state of manipur when the hills are not utilized when the budget provisions are you know absolutely totally like low mm. you're giving you know 5 crores to the hills and you're giving 50 crore to the valley mm. how will this you know increase production or how how are you going to ensure that your gdp is going to grow mm. it's never going to grow mm. it's going to get worse and worse mm. so all these things have to stop so we, we're going to get in the best possible economic planners mm. economic advisors mm. to make sure that we use the land proportionately properly mm. and little be it the resources that we have or the finances the income the income that we have mm. every single parameter of income that we have is being used only for creating capital assets right you cannot do that you have to create jobs for people mm. and the only way of doing that right now is at least with concern to the hills which i represent and knowing of the last 4 years of budget because i i took the expenditure from the government of manipur the floor of the house on the 23rd or 24th of august of mm. 2021 mm. whereby the entire thing i've put it in public display saying that when this is the budgetary provision mm. and it's a lopsided budget provision mm. then how do you expect the state to grow this is exactly why we are last we are going to make sure that the planning and allotment of budget will be people centric mm. and make sure that people are employed now how does one people employ for a state like manipur we think that everything depends on the government sector right. public sector mm. it is not so if that was the case then india is 130 crore population mm. what is the total employees by the union or by all the states put together so this is you know the most major area where at least the present congress party is going to make sure that production levels with regard to where the local population is experts on mm. see since generations our our families back in the villages they know exactly that it's going to rain yeah or it won't rain this year so there should be no paddy this year mm. or we should do this this year so mm. all of these things that we are already automatically equipped with one has to tap this mm. and make sure that we use this and then we start producing in such a way that it has never happened in the last 70 years of manipur's existence mm. a, a further question specifically on women uh, priyanka gandhi is of course taking a more active role in leadership of the congress party in up we've seen a much higher number of uh, women candidates being fielded by the congress uh, that hasn't doesn't seem to have translated uh, to manipur as such only 17 out of the overall uh, number how what are your thoughts on this this is a very tricky question you see it's it's a difficult thing 
we talk of women empowerment now why i say it's difficult is because at least i know personally from my family that the women are so much more intelligent than the men mm. so i mean all agree on that this is exactly what i'm saying so uh, that the the solution lies in giving them the same space as men not on reservation or not not on giving them you know uh, some sort of a quota give them that equal fighting space mm. this is what we say mm. at least within the party also we say leave it open because this is not a boxing match mm. or a wrestling match mm. that is where you know you need brute physical strength yeah. but here it's you know a lot of intelligence is required wisdom is required a lot of patience is required and that i think all those all of those qualities are with women more than with men mm. so the problem is giving that equal space mm. it should be across the spectrum mm. so in the young guard in the young generation this is exactly what we feel that you give total freedom for women to participate and it should be based on merit mm. everything on merit mm. not on women or men mm. this is exactly the reason with india's downfall today saying that we are going to do uh, 33% for women now you cannot have an unreliable or unqualified person just because the wom- the person is of a particular gender now what happens when you put in a, a person who is not fit for a particular position then the person included because this is electoral democracy this nation now you are giving all of your hopes on a person who is not equipped enough so this is why we have to create the space to bring in the best women in politics and for that very reason this congress party is reforming this i know very clearly now what priyanka ji is trying to do in up it see she's she understands the pulse of up mm. this you know much better i think a lot of educated youth across the country know that up is the heartbeat of the country politically because it has too many seats yeah. and the equations and the stakes are too high mm. so now you have to appeal to the voters as how they live their life at ground today so she is trying to adapt to that and trying to get the women on board saying that we have to jointly or you know to cohesively together change the course of the democratic process of the nation mm. but in the core of the party we have made it very clear today because we are privy to a few conversations within the party across the nation mm. and yeah. it's where we are inviting and it is open for women who are actually very qualified to come and compete and be part of the entire democratic process within this party also okay uh, coming now to slightly more micro questions to do with your own constituency uh, and of course a central theme uh, of or something that's i think brought a lot of attention to your work as a legislator Uh, which is the hill areas committee uh, autonomous uh, the, the bill that you led the drafting of which hasn't yet been tabled in the manipur assembly uh, could you first of course just outline very briefly i know you've gone into many details mm. of the bill and the, the, it's uh, available for people to read and 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 watch videos on etc mm-hmm. etc so not too much but but what is uh, it about 371c and and this bill that will uh, sort of reduce the divide that exists very clearly in manipur between the hills and the valley cutting things very short mm. and uh, summing things up 371c is the relationship between the union of india and the hills of manipur yeah. like rahul ji had said union of states i had said plurality now the pluralism within the hills of manipur different ethnic communities are there mm. yet it is india understanding the uniqueness of manipur too mm. that is the plurality of how the hills are actually you know conceptualized so this is why the union of india enacted article 371c and became a law 1972 28 june 1972 was when the presidential proclamation came the problem is when rules of law are not followed obviously then there is bound to be trouble somewhere mm. and the other part of this is that it has been published in the rule book mm. since 1972 in the rules of procedure and conduct of business of manipur legislative assembly mm. now india functions under legislative supremacy so now within this since it's there in the rule book and you are claiming before before the entire nation before the state that mm. we are following these particular law or these laws that are there in the rule book yep. and you're not following it mm. so today what we are saying is that we want to follow we want to use it because you are using it for the last 50 years So when we say that we want to start using it for the welfare of the advancement of the people in the hills see there is no power on earth that can say no mm. one part 
Second part, as a legislator, let us just to you know uh, give a short uh, example, mm. small example. Let us assume that uh, I want I'm br- I bring in a private member's bill. Right. Any private member's bill before it is introduced in the house or discussed, nothing can be rejected. Yeah. You have to introduce it. Yeah. Now, with regard to the Hillary's committee, mm. we have been you know mandated and authorized by a presidential proclamation, mm. which is the same as the Union of India mm. or the Constitution, which has provided. Now, we are allowed, we are permitted mm. to take resolutions, recommend to the state for any legislative action mm. or executive action. Mm. What we have done this time is, this bill that we have formulated, we have sent it across the government of Manipur. Mm. It is their duty, their bounden duty to at least table it in the house, mm. introduce it and discuss it. Mm. Now, no matter how wrong they think the bill is or how... Out, uh, outreached we are with regard to this bill, mm. they, they have no choice. Mm. The system is such that, like I said earlier, even when a private member's bill, any private member, you cannot reject it no matter what you put in that bill. Yeah. Only after introduction can you reject it. Mm. Now, this is a Hillary's Committee bill mm. by 20 members of this state, mm. which is one third. Mm. And you are just keeping it in cold storage. Mm. Now, it, it shows that rule of law is not followed in the state. Mm. Now, if rule of law is not followed in the state, how do you expect the state to actually you know, grow? Or how do you expect the state to function? Mm. You are actually saying that the state has failed. Mm. You don't follow rule of law in the house. Mm. There are times when the executive, they do what they want with governance. Mm. But the house, you cannot. So when they are not tabling or introducing this bill, mm. you are directly countering or challenging the constitution of India. Mm. And a state assembly is not empowered to do that. To do that. So how, how will the ADC bill, uh, the autonomous district council bill, uh, empower the hills and, and make decision making like, like it says in, in the wordage, autonomous? See, there are four schedules in the, in, in the presidential order. The first, second, third and fourth schedule. Mm. The second schedule are the subject matters whereby the Hill Risk Committee is permitted or mandated because all of these schedule mat- matters are within the purview. Mm. That is there in that uh, order. Mm. All of these scheduled matters will be within the purview of the Hill Risk Committee. Mm. The Hill Risk Committee is a legislative body within the state legislature. Yeah. Schedule 4 so very clearly says the relationship between the Hill Risk Committee and the state legislature. And whereby any law or any bill that the Hill Risk Committee recommends or what the state legislature, if it feels that the you know, Hill Risk Committee is not empowered for that, mm. they can filter it out, they can change things, they can amend things, mm. but both, as what has been reported by the Hillary's Committee and the one that has been passed by the State Assembly, both have to go to the governor mm. and the governor's dis- discretion, mm. not the directions of the government mm. as such, but the discretion of the governor will be final. Mm. In those scheduled matters, mm. the first is economic planning and development within the plan and location of the state mm. for the hills. Right which is so clear that it is the hill people. See, India understood the disparity in the allocation of legislature. Mm. One third in the hills and two third in the valley. Sheer size, 10% in the valley Mm. and you have two third Mm. and 90% in the hills Mm. and you have only one third. Mm. So they understood that there would be a disparity in development. Mm. So this is the reason why economic planning and development within the plan allocation of the hill areas is, Mm. is, is, you know, a mandated schedule matter of the hill areas committee. Mm. It has never been done. Mm. So when that is not done, the people that know the pulse and the exact core areas as to which which needs addressing mm. for progress in the hills, mm. are they elected from the hills? This is exactly the reason why the Union of India felt it necessary when statehood was granted in 1972, mm. that before statehood was granted, Article 371C was inserted. Right. Now, if you don't follow that, then the hills obviously have gone totally you know, from bad to worse. Mm. So with this bill, mm. what we have done is, as per rule of law and as per the act. Mm. We have only said we will follow this act Mm. because India, in in all its intelligence, Mm. felt that this should be within the purview of the Hillary's committee. Mm. Now, when the legislature enacts something, it is for the executive to follow. Mm. The Hillary's committee is the mini-assembly for the hills, Mm. as per that act. The only thing is that since there can be no assemblies, in two assemblies in a state, we have to forward it to the cabinet council, mm. and they bring it as a bill. Mm. They cannot change it. They cannot review it. They cannot amend it, mm. but just introduce it. And if anything needs to be removed or it needs to be rejected, mm. it can only be done in the house. Mm. That is the rule of law. Mm. 
We have not done that. Mm. Now, with this bill, when you follow rule of law, that is our hope, mm. all, you know, acts in the country, they are meant to be followed. When we don't follow, or we follow a little bit, or if sometimes we say that, no, this is not good for our people. That is another thing. When the executive don't follow. But when the legislature... When the lawmakers yeah. stop following the rule of law, hmm. then you tell me what would happen. Where do we stand? It's a banana republic then. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, fair enough. Does, does this in some way also link up to, uh, at least from your perspective and your thoughts, uh, a wider or more long-term solution to the Naga question? I cannot you know, directly speak on the Naga political issue because uh, when the ceasefire was declared in 1997, the entire country, you know, was a lot of a ray of hope, thinking that decades of the Naga problem would be solved. Mm. It was at the prime minister level. Mm. Country would be held in the, the talks would be held in the third country, mm. and it would be without any preconditions. Mm. Now, when I don't know what are the conditions, mm. since it's without any preconditions, I don't know the conditions under which the talks are being held, mm. or under which the framework agreement was arrived at, mm. then. It is not my competence to say whether this would actually solve the Naga political issue or not. Mm. In the meantime, the tribals of Manipur, of which you know, many are not part of the Naga community, yes. but as tribals, mm. it is only our duty to make sure that the tribals grow. Mm. Now, what, how much this will reflect on the Naga political issue, I cannot say genuinely. Because I am not privy to the discussions of those talks, mm. neither do I know anything about what the contents of the talks are or the framework agreement which was in 2015 mm. within the Modiji government mm. and the NSNIM. Mm. So the Naga political issue, which also includes the Naga national political groups, NNPGs, mm. with this also, we don't exactly know what is the content. Mm. So this bill, I don't know whether this will help or whether this will, you know, uh, promote the Naga political issue or not, but I definitely know that the, all the tribals in Manipur, mm. this will definitely change the course for the tribals in Manipur. So, uh, as we, the people we've spoken to, uh, many have been uh, reluctant to, of course, come out and say who they are supporting, etc., etc., uh, because of real political reasons and and, and issues that uh, you know you understand, of course, uh, but perhaps the rest of India doesn't understand that clearly. Uh, but many, uh, most have appreciated uh, your efforts and your, the, the vocalness uh, with which you've addressed a lot of these issues uh, pertaining to all of the uh, tribal people of, of the state. Uh, despite that, you're unable to go to Akhrul to run your campaign from there, despite being the sitting MLA. Uh, explain this dichotomy a little bit. Now, how, how would I put this across to you? It's very simple, yet uh, very complex again. See, my dad, he is 95 today. How, you know, he's explained things to us is how you win an election is more important than winning an election. Mm. The process of winning the election is more important than winning. Mm. We have believed in that. Mm. Last year too, I was here. Mm. I was stationed here. Mm. And... Uh, God willing and the people being with me, I sailed through. I did not go for a single campaigning. This time too, I feel it's not much different. The only thing is, the people have five years of my uh, work to actually think whether I'm competent mm. or not. Mm. It's for them to easily decide whether I should continue or not. Mm. I've always said, during my entire uh, 2012 elections, 2017 elections, and this 2022 elections also, I say very clearly that Campaigning should not be restricted to, you know, just a month or mm. two. Mm. And that be the parameter for selecting people who have ability or are capable. Mm. You take the, you know, four years and ten months mm. as the parameter. Mm. So I, I, I always felt that I should be touring, you know, somewhere in Europe or holidaying. And the people should judge because whether I had given my 100% in four years and ten months. Mm. So for me, in fact, it's a dream come true mm. that I don't have to actually campaign. I've always felt that uh, this is how politics should be. Mm. You give your four years, ten months, mm. and the last two months before the elections, you go wherever you want mm. and enjoy life. Mm. At least you have two months to do what you want. But the sad thing and the irony of Manipur and India is that you have the entire political class, the party, the government, 
everyone pushing and pulling, putting everything into it, like as though your whole life matters and your, your stakes are, everything, everything is put in there. So uh, for me, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm grateful that I have very dedicated and dedicated and honest supporters. Mm. People who are like, you know, hard rock mm. behind me and my family. Mm. So no matter what sort of uh, inducements mm. or be it some other form of uh, increments, you can say, or whatever sort of uh, illegal activities that mm. take place, mm. my people don't fall prey. And that's why you just keep a very low profile mm. because like my dad says, mm. how you win the election, mm. the people have to be with you. Mm. So if the people are with me, mm. then I'm confident that I'll win one part. The other part, we've never spoken ill of anybody in our lives from the beginning till now. Mm. I have nothing to say against other candidates, mm. uh, just to say that, you know, wish them well also. Mm. So the people actually understand that being here also, mm. it's not di much different. Mm. So whether I'm here, whether I'm in Ukrul, it's still me. Mm. And if I've actually managed to reach out to the people, then it should not be very difficult to actually win an election or lose an election. Mm. Fair enough. Uh, the Armed Forces Special Powers Act is something that cannot be ignored when having any conversation about wider uh, politics in Manipur uh, and governance in Manipur and, of course, livelihood in, and life in Manipur. Uh, the ruling dispensation, the BJP government has not mentioned uh, AFSPA in their manifesto, uh, despite saying that it's now a peaceful state. Uh, you have, uh, how if the Congress does come to power with the kind of mandate the BJP has in the centre, how will you deal with this question? This is something, this particular act is something, you know, which the entire uh, northeastern areas where it is actually applied, it's been very disturbing, be it for the elders, be it for the youngsters, or be it for the, you know, younger generation to come. This is one of the most disturbing acts that have taken place in the nation. Now, at that point of time, in the 50s, mm. what was the actual you know, call or the reason behind enactment of this? Only the people of that time would know. India was also new then. Mm. We had imported most of our rule of law from Western countries. Mm. So we were not equipped enough, I feel, the nation, mm. not the lawmakers, mm. the nation was not ready for our constitution. So whereby we all, we all felt that uh, all of those laws and acts which are, part of the, which, which are in the constitution of this nation were, would be good for this nation. Mm. Now, we were mired in the caste-based system mm. before 1947. Mm. The difference that this act did was In, in paper or technically, yeah. it empowered people. Right. But at ground level, the people are so divided, mm. which we still remain today. Otherwise, we would not have a BSP, mm. or neither would we have a JDU, mm. or we would not have, you know, this, uh, this Samata, uh, what, Samajwadi Party. Mm. All of these parties, which are, if all of their fundamentals are based on caste. We would not have this, because the laws would have been perfect by itself. Mm. The, the, the difference is the people were not ready. Mm. Now, Armed Forces Special Powers Act. If this act was in a place like the US or in England, maybe, maybe, no matter how draconian it was, because the people or the citizens of that nation or the law enforcement agencies of that nation are most, you know, most of them are ready to actually understand violation of human rights, but it, yet it still happens in those countries too. Mm. So even when in such developed nations, without an armed forces Spe special powers act there too, they have excesses there. Yeah. So now in a country like India, so divided our cultures are, mm. our customs are, mm. and the different you know, poles, the, the, the difference in our poles, should have made sure that an act like this should have never been passed because you would never understand the sentiments of a person from Arunachal and a person from JNK mm. and a person from Kanyakumari. Mm. So when you don't understand this, when the people emotionally mm. don't integrate as one first, 
You cannot bring laws by force, thinking that you would suppress, because that is not part of democracy. Mm. My leaders in the Congress do say all the time, saying that the beauty of democracy is you listen to the voice of the weakest mm. and bring it at par with the strongest, and you make sure that this cohesively works as one. Mm. Now, when India, a country as big as India, 130 crore population, that is India, mm. today, mm. and Nagaland, 20 lakhs, mm. when an act is brought in force by India, when today also when the, the present Nagaland state is only 20 lakhs, mm. and you are shoving down the throat of every single citizen now in the Northeast, with one of the worst legislated laws of that time, mm. I think it's time, if India is saying that we should be part of the Permanent Council in the Security Council mm. of the UN, mm. when we are claiming our place mm. among the groups of nations that are the most advanced, mm. I think it's time that this act should go. It has to go. Mm. Because when most developed nations also, are, they don't you know, dare mm. to bring in such laws and such acts, mm. then what does this say about our nation? Mm. It says that if our people are integrated and you know, emotionally one today, mm. this mm. act should go as a first thing mm. to show the country that no matter how plural we are, mm. or no matter how different we are across our cultures and our customs, mm. we are one as a nation. Mm. So you cannot segregate and isolate one particular area that is the Northeast with draconian laws mm. and say that the rest of the country is perfectly fine. Mm. So the first thing is the nation comes first. Mm. And since the nation comes first, a law like this should go immediately. Fair enough. I completely understand your reasoning of it, but in terms of real politics, how will you, is it something that is actually achievable, uh, the, the removal of, of this act? See, the constitution says, we the people. Mm. Now, it is a representative form of governan gov gov governance, mm. India's. There are certain laws, for example, concurrent list, state list, central list, mm. Law and order being one, one that is within the state list. Mm. States have absolute you know, authority over law and order. Mm. Now you tell me this. When a law like AFSPA mm. cannot be touched by state, mm. what does this say? Mm. My leader came to Manipur just recently mm. and, sta and, and stated very clearly before a crowd of 25,000, 30,000. Mm. He said that India is a union of states. Mm. And each culture, each custom, each people must be respected across the spectrum of this nation. Mm -hmm. Now you tell me then, when a law like AFSPA, whereby, like I say again, law and order is a state subject, mm -hmm. and yet you put in a law like this, mm -hmm. and in the guise of national security, mm -hmm. you infringe upon every single fundamental right of a citizen of this nation. Mm -hmm. This is not justice. Yep. And India is not what is being projected through this act. Mm. India has far superseded that today. Mm. You, countries across the nation mm. look up to India, be it in our election processes, mm. be it in you know, aid with regard to COVID virus too, the vaccines mm. that were exported out to so many nations. Mm. We are saying that we are the big brother today, you know, as, as equal as the US. But our actions on ground within domestic level, we are not equipped. So this says that state, state, state laws being so very clearly defined within state list and law and orders also being part of state law. Mm. I think AFSPA should, to a great extent, if the Union of India, if they feel that this law is to stay for some more time, mm. then the Supreme Court should step in and say that no, then this should be part of the concurrent list. Or they should, you know, there should be a huge stakeholder should be the state. Mm. Because India cannot just bulldoze and say that, like, like I say, you are not using this law for eliminating extremism or you know, anti-social elements within the nation against the nation. Mm. You are using this to target so many civilians, mm. so many ex extrajudicial killings in the mm. state of Manipur. The Supreme Court has taken notice. Mm. The entire nation knows today, mm. yet you still feel that AFSPA should continue. Mm. So that being a parameter, the states like being a union of states. I think all the states in the country should rise up as one and say that you are infringing mm. upon the federal rights of a state mm. when you do something like this. Mm. If needed, if at all needed at any point of time mm. to try and counter insurgency mm. or be it you know, extremism, whatever it is, mm. the states have to be a stakeholder in this. Mm. 
When you are saying that there's a union of states, and in the, at the end of the day you say that this should be just the mandate of the center, mm. then what does that say? It says that any point of time you can just trample on the rights of the state. Mm. Now, without the state, what is India? Mm. India is nothing. This is exactly the reason why I, you know, I, I would appeal that the, all the states mm. in the nation, they mm. come together mm. and say that this act should go. Mm. It's a kind of collective action, I think, that uh, many of us, especially young India, would, would really uh, appreciate and like to see uh, as much of a dream as it might be where we are today. Uh, finally, uh, uh, Alfred, how one part of the narrative that is coming across, particularly in the valley, is that voting for the BJP means you have direct access to the central government, which is, as of today, all-powerful. Uh, I can understand the narrative. How, do you, how, how far do you think you have been successful with this reasoned uh, sort of campaign, uh, making logical arguments to counter that sort of argument? See, what one has to understand first is mm. the fundamentals of governance. Mm. Be it BJP or be it Congress, be it any party in government in the states. For example, the state of Manipur. The funding process is such that it is a 90-10 ratio basis. Our income should be 10 and the 90 is given as grant by the Union of India. Mm. When my income, don't tell me that when the BJP comes, the income has increased so much that... <laughs> Because your expenditure can mm. only be commensurate to your income. Mm. So when the Congress was in power, mm. the difference between the Congress and BJP is that the Congress, you know, uh, we have so many experienced leaders, mm. a lot of experienced leaders, that you know that you have reached a saturation point mm. and that you're going to go into overdraft. Mm. The difference with BJP is that how many times they've gone into overdraft and the RBI has to step in, mm. saying that overdraft points here, mm. now you stop. Mm. You have reached your limit. The only thing here is that, how does one govern within your limited resources? We know our limit. The Congress party knows its limits. Mm. This is so very clear. This is why within this funding pattern of 10 and 90 ratio, mm. nobody can deny this. Mm. Be it a Congress government, be it a BJP government, the only advantage should be special packages by the Union of India. I dare the BJP government today. You tell us what spe special packages have you given for Manipur. You tell us. We know there's nothing beyond what is already our allocated budget in the you know, Department of Development of Northeastern Region, mm. be it the Northeastern Council, mm. be it the Minority Affairs Ministry, any ministry you talk of, or anything from the Union of India, mm. is all within budget allocation. Mm. So you've done nothing different. When, for example, the UPA was there, mm. So many capital assets were created by the Union of India mm. as special packages. Mm. Special plan assistance, those days they would give to the tune of 800 crores, 900 crores, to a cash-starved economy like Manipur. Manipur. We depend solely on the Union of India right. because there's no production. Mm. So this is why our form of governance mm. and the BJP's mm. is so very different. Mm. But like I say, there is no ad advantage. Mm. BJP has ruled five years. Mm. I dare them, tell us. They could not even complete the central secretariat, which I've, I'm sure you have seen. Yeah. If you haven't, I would request that you see it just across the road yeah. next, to my plan, next to my house here. Mm. If you go across, you'll see 90% mm. of works that were completed during the Congress tenure mm. in 2017, mm. it's still there. Mm. So you tell me, mm. they should have at least finished that. Mm. They are trying, but I don't know what, you know, they, they are stuck with all this while. Now, they are just going around, you know, inaugurating all programs that the Congress has initiated and the Congress has taken up. Mm. The only thing that the BJP has done mm. is that also within the budget allocation of the state to the Ministry of uh, Donor, mm. as soon as the BJP government came, I guess they went and uh, you know, requested the Union of India, the Prime Minister, and the Prime Minister had allocated I think, 150 crores for establishing women markets in the hills. Mm. And that was also within the budget allocation of the donor ministry. Right. That is the only thing that they have come up with. Mm. And now, if it is within the state allocation, state allocated budget, I would have much preferred that you make my district hospital into a 100 or 200 bedded, mm. give us an MRI, you know, mm. MRI you know, machine, mm. a CT scan. Mm. An operating yeah, theater. All, all of those things. I, I would have preferred that so much. Right. They, have, they have inaugurated a 15 crore market shed where the first floor 
totally unused. Nobody uses it. So then what are you looking at the hills at? Mm. You're looking at it from a milking cow point of view. That you give it to your near and dear ones, the contracts. Mm. They make money mm. and that money is transferred to the valley. Mm. This, is, this is why this bill, mm. it will ensure that all of this will be done away with. If, Alfred, things go according to plan and you get to fight this fight uh, both for federalism uh, as well as within the state itself, uh, and the Congress is leading a coalition, a secular coalition, uh, do the tribal people of, of, of Manipur have the, have the chance uh, to see uh, one of their people as the leader of that coalition? Very, very hypothetical what you're asking. Because one thing my dad always you know, told me when I was growing up is, in politics, there should be no hypothesis. Mm. That is the most dangerous thing. The only thing is that it should be logical. You should have visions, you mm. should have dreams, mm. but you have to make sure that you take your people to a logical conclusion. Mm. Now, see, what happens uh, when the results come out? I have to leave it to, to that. So it's just another 10 days away now. Mm. In another 10 days' time, you'll know exactly who is going to be what. I'm sure the BJP is going to go hammer and tongs to try and, you know, cobble up a coalition again. But when you have mostly, you know, dissatisfied and angry coalition partners that they've had enough of the Bajapa, then when our people come in, which I'm very sure it will, if the state is ready and if the nation is ready, Manipur is not an exception. They have always made space for youngsters to always lead. Today, I think the, within the BJP itself, they have you know, removed all of their elderly so-called statesmen that were, that were early prevalent, mm. the ones that built the BJP. Mm. Today, maybe I would say on the same lines then that it's time for Modiji also to pave way for someone as young as uh, Anurag Thakur to take, play, to take his position. Mm. I would very much prefer. And Anuragji to come and be the next prime minister of this nation. Mm -hmm. So likewise, in the state of Manipur too, supposing you have the BJP coalition coming, I would also prefer that it should be an Arkimo. You see, a, a congressman, his father, his grandfather was one of the first party presidents of the of the state. Right. They are dynamic people. Mm. These people should be projected by the BJP. So also by the Congress or by any party, but. It all depends on what the results would be. Hmm. I can only request that if the BJP does form the government, hmm. you should make you know, younger people. Hmm. You have a Prithvi Raj hmm. from Moiram. All these youngsters who are dynamic, who are ready to take you know, things directly by the horn and try and bring change to the state, I think those people should be given a chance, definitely. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, there you have it. March 10th is when uh, all this will stop being hypothetical and we'll be back here, uh, maybe to have another chat with Alfred to discuss where things stand at that point. Uh, until then, keep following NewsClick's coverage of the elections across the country, not just in Manipur, also five other states are uh, in the middle of this electoral process. Uh, visit our website, newsclick.in, for updates. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.